Hey guys, I'm going to be going over embryology. If you have no idea what that is, I promise you will know what that is because I've broken it down in such a simple way and I'm going to explain only the essentials, only the basics so that when you're faced with any sort of embryology discussion or if you have to learn the development of a certain organ like the heart or the kidneys, for example, you'll know what's going on, you'll know what they're talking about. So in a nutshell, embryology is the process of turning two cells, a sperm and an egg, into a human. That's pretty much it, but a billion PhDs can be had in any of these steps. As usual, I've drawn a lot of things up on the, on the, on the board. And don't worry, don't let it scare you as usual. We're going to go through it very simply. We're going to break it down into steps. And in, in, I'm going to explain it in a way so that everyone will understand it. Okay? So, let's just begin at the beginning. First things first, we have over here. Just forget about everything else. Only focus up here. So, what we have here is the uterus, the oviduct or the uterine tube and the ovary right here. So, during ovulation, the secondary oocyte is expelled from the ovary, and the fimbriae, the fimbriae are the finger-like projections of the oviduct, they suck in the oocyte in through its oviduct. Okay, so let's just stop there. The oocyte re re releases an egg, and the oviduct, the uterine duct, takes the egg. So, next thing. The uterine duct has muscles, and the muscles cause a peristaltic motion, much like the peristalsis in your gastrointestinal tract, that when you eat food or swallow, the muscles move the food down. Much like that, the oviduct has a similar sort of system to move the oocyte down the tube and into the uterus. As well as the peristaltic motions, you also have the ciliated epithelium that uh, beat the oocyte down the tract as well. So there's it's two, two ways that the oviduct moves the egg down. What does it have to do with embryology? Because that oocyte is half of you. Okay? And on day zero, fertilization happens. So fertilization is the process of which a male and a, fa <laughs> male and a female gamete fuse, and it occurs in the ampulla. So in this oviduct, there are certain... Uh, areas of them. The area of the ampulla, that's where it should happen. In a normal situation, fertilization happens in the ampulla. Okay, so about only 1% of the sperm ejected into the vagina enters the cervix and can swim up here. But un contrary to the popular view of s uh, sperm swimming up all the way in, it's more the contractions of the uterine muscles that propel the sperm up more so than the actual sperm moving. Uh, sperm's motility is only a small part of how they make it up here. So it is a lot of the en endometrial uh, or the uterine contraction that moves them up. So, first things first, day zero, fertilization. The first day, day zero, fertilization occurs in the ampulla. So we have here the sperm penetrating the egg, and like I said, the actual sperm penetrating the egg is a whole nother subject on how it does it. There is a, a strategy that happens, but we're going to leave it for now and save it for a future video. Or Right now, we're only focusing on the very basics of embryology. So on day zero, you have a sperm entering the egg. Then what happens? The sperm and the egg fuse, and then the egg is able to finish meiosis too. So when, when that happens... Uh, cleavage occurs and then the one cell turns into two cells at which point the cell is called the blastomere so the first keep it simple day zero fertilization as soon as fertilization occurs it's the zygote and on day one it's called the blastomere the two cell on day two the two cells turn into four cells keep in mind that this at, in this moment the cells are rapidly dividing in this small confined space. So initially we had two cells, and on day two we have four cells, but the four cells are still the same, uh, in the same size as the two cells. So with this rapid growth, the cells are getting smaller and smaller because they're remaining in the confined space that they're in. So to keep it simple, day zero, fertilization. Day one, blastomy. 
day four, four cells. And let's go to day three where you have, is called a morula. It's like a, a solid uh, sphere of cells. It's the, just the division that occurs from the male and female gametes uh, binding and fusing. So on day six, we have something called the blastocyst. Now, don't let that scare you. This is essentially this. So if you just look at this, that's the blastocyst. And the cells are starting to differentiate a little bit. So what happens is that fluid starts to fill the morula and it creates this uh, cavity inside the blastocyst. And you'll notice that the cells are predominantly at one point of, of the blastocyst. So if we just focus here, that's day six now. Here, we're on day six. The outer cell mass and the inner cell mass. That's all you need to know. All you need to know is that on day six, at the blastocyst, it's made up of the trophoblast, and it's also made up of the, or the, the outer cell mass, which is the trophoblast, or the inner cell mass, okay? So, that's all you need to know for now. Blastocyst, there's a blastocyst cavity, is fluid, and the inner cell mass, and then the outer cell mass, which is a trophoblast. Okay, so, with that being said, on the next day, and another thing that I'd like you to keep in mind is all of these days that these things are occurring, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be different with every textbook that you get. That's because there are individual differences. One embryo might uh, undergo implantation on a different day that another one would. So just keep in mind when you're looking at textbooks and you're looking at um, the days that I've put up here. It's going to be different, but it's all normal. So... Let's just go, let's just let's move on with it. So day seven we have implantation. So what happens is that if we focus right here, this is day seven now. So right here, let's just go through what it is, and then you'll understand what's going on. This right here is the uterus. That's the uterus. This is the epithelium of the uteri. So right here, let's just grab this and flip it here. Okay or more like this, so that the uterus is here, and this blastocyst, or the inner cell and the outer cell mass, is at the bottom here. So this here is the uh, um, uh, lumen of the uterus, and this is the actual utera uterus, this is the actual uterus. So let's go step by step. So we have the epithelial cells, and now you'll see in orange that that's the outer cell mass. That's called the trophoblast. That's your first word that, you've, uh, that you need to know. You need to know what the trophoblast is because it's going to differentiate into things that we need to know what they are as well. So just the first thing to, to write down if you're going to write it down. Trophoblast is the outer cell mass, okay? In orange. Trophoblast, it's the outer cell mass. So at this point, when implantation happens, the inner cell mass is now known as the embryoblast. That's because that's going to be you. So this trophoblast, it's not necessarily going to make up my skin or your skin or something like that, but it, it does contribute. What is going to make up your whole body as you are now is this embryoblast right here in green. So you'll notice here that the trophoblast cells are infiltrating the endometrium. So they're degrading, they're destroying, you can say, they're invading the uterus and they're implanting because eventually it wants to move up here because that's where you will grow up. So um, keeping it simple, on day seven, we have implantation. The trophoblast or the outer cell mass enter, start entering, they invade the uterus. Keep it that simple and let's move on from there. So... Okay, so let's pay attention to what's going on up here now. Forget about everything else, just look at here. This is day nine, okay? And at, like I said again, it's going to be different from textbook to textbook, but for the time being, around this should be around day eight to day ten, okay? So let's just go through what everything is. So now, this is the uterine, uh, uterine epithelium, and at the bottom is the, like all around here, there's the lumen. And this is inside the uterus now, inside the wall of the uterus. 
and you'll see right here that our trophoblast has differentiated. So, the next thing that you, you're just going to have to commit these words to memory. The trophoblast, it differentiates into a syncytiotrophoblast. Syncytiotrophoblast. I don't know an easy way to remember it. Just write it down a thousand times and, and you'll get it. So, uh, syncytiotrophoblast and also the cytotrophoblast. So the syncytiotrophoblast, that's going to be important for hormonal control as, as the fetus develops. So it releases human chorionic gonadotropin. But this is, again, we're going to leave it as simple as that and go through that on another day. Today, we're just focusing on how you're becoming, how that is going to become this, okay? We're just going to keep it really simple. So um, you'll, you will notice this. So in purple here, we have the syncytiotrophoblast, keeping it simple. In orange, we have the cytotrophoblast, and that were though both of those, those were your tro tropo tropoblast. Those were the outer cell masses, which are now differentiated. Okay? So if you pay attention to what in, in the blue and in the green, you'll notice that um, this right here are two layers. Those are from the embryoblast that we just spoke about. Those are going to become you. So you are this. These two layers of cells, that's you, that's this. It's, yeah, that's it. At this time, this is you. Okay? So on day nine, after your parents got together, this is what you are. Okay? So moving on, this one in the blue, they're more columnar cells, columnar epithelial cells or whatever. That's called the epiblast. And in the bottom over here, that's the hypoblast. So keep it keeping it simple. Initially, we have the epiblast and the hypoblast. Over here is the amnionic cavity, and over here is the yolk sac. And we can go into that much more in much more detail on another day. Let's keep going because we want to push through to gastrulation and how we get the three germ layers. Okay, so this is the probably the most important part now. It's this process of what happens here so if we have in blue here the epiblast it's still part of it was part of the inner cell mass it was part of the embryoblast if we just look at this epiblast right here and this hypoblast this is how gastrulation happens so in this epiblast we have a primitive streak that develops it's like a crease just think about it in, in, on a flat piece of paper, you'll have a crease and cells move into it and under it. So if this is one flat piece of paper with a crease in it, cells are coming in and filling up the middle, okay? There is a very popular, a lot of people think that the hypoblast becomes the endoderm when it's not actually true. All of what you are comes from the epiblast. So epiblast cells migrate through the primitive streak and dislocate the hypoblast and first form the endoderm, then more cells fill in, they form the mesoderm, and then the epiblast becomes the ectoderm. So the hypoblast gets displaced and becomes the yolk sac. So the hypoblast is just yolk sac. It, has, it will never end up being you because the epiblast will have cells that migrate through the primitive streak and become the endoderm, the Mesoderm and the ectoderm. And that's that. And now we're about to go through that. But before we go through gastrulation uh, in a little bit a little bit more detail, we're going to just quickly summarize everything just so that you, you can keep up and you get the gist, okay? So, sperm plus oocyte equals blastomia. Or well, more like if the sperm is like tiny like that. That's not to scale. So we have a sperm and an oocyte. They join. You get a blastomia. Then you have a morula. Then you have a blastocyst. That's it. All of that that you have just watched, you have the oocyte and the sperm turning into a blastomere. Then you have the morula, and then you'll get the blastocyst. That's it. That's all you need to know for now. Okay? The blastocyst then turns into these three germ layers. Okay? So we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And to get an idea of where these three come from, it's all from the epiblast. The epiblast 
makes up the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the hypoderm. Okay? And of, of course, this is an oversimplification for this that we have over here. And you have over here the amniotic cavity, and you have the yolk sac. Okay? We're just keeping it as simple as possible. Okay. So, ectoderm, mesoderm. Oh, oops, this is meant to be endoderm. Okay, so, finally, so have a look at over here. This is essentially what this is. So we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. As simple as that. This will become you. That will become this, okay? Simple as that. We'll keep it as simple as possible. So with time, you'll have the neural fold here. And these are the neural crest cells, and if we and this that is still the mesoderm, and that's still the ectoderm. Don't let this scare you. This is just step one. That's the next step. This is step three, and there's a lot more. PhD level, we can do it on another day. We're keeping it simple so you get what embryology is. So, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, three germ layers. Gastrulation happened to get to give us this. Then as this folds, the It'll pinch off and it will get the neural crest cells along this neural tube. The neural tube will become your brain and spinal cord. The neural crest will become uh, the peripheral nervous system. And then we have the mesoderm. The mesoderm has three main components. This one that kind of looks like a, uh, I don't know, a receptor of some kind. That's called the paraxial mesoderm. And the paraxial mesoderm, that gives rise to somites, like muscles, skeletal muscle, uh, etc. Okay? The next part that is kind of like a bulb-like thing coming off this uh, paraxial mesoderm, that's the intermediate mesoderm. And the intermediate mesoderm, it gives rise to the gonads and kidneys. And I do have a kidney embryology video that you can find on my channel as well if, if you want to know how the kidney develops. Then finally, we have the lateral plates, which, which are part of the mesoderm, but the lateral plates have two parts to it. So we have the somatic lateral plates, and we have the splanchnic. And the splanchnic lateral plates will become your heart, and circulation, etc. And I do have another heart embryology video on my channel too, if you're interested. And finally, the endoderm, which will become your gastrointestinal tubes. It'll become your, your gastrointestinal system, sorry. So, keeping it simple, what happens is that this folds, the gastrointestinal tube, uh, the endoderm will form the gastrointestinal tube, and the ectoderm, I forgot to mention, will become skin, it's your epidermis. So this outer part will eventually close and will form your outside. And that's about as simple as I'm going to keep this, uh, I mean, that's about as much detail as I'll go into for this, excuse me, video. Um, stay tuned for future videos where I'll be uploading more advanced uh, embryology on the heart. And uh, please subscribe if you want to keep in touch with that, okay? Thank you.